needed that job, and you were the best qualified. But they had to give it to a minority because of a racial quota. Is that really fair? Harvey Gantt says it is. Gantt supports Ted Kennedy's racial quota law that makes the color of your skin more important than your qualifications. My job will probably appreciate me starting off this video with an analogy. So today, we're going to talk about midterm elections, despite them occurring nine months from now. See, when two people love each other, that is, white identity politics and white grievance, it gives birth to seats in Congress. While campaigning during the 1990 U.S. Senate election of North Carolina, incumbent Jesse Helms dropped this unseasoned yet effective political version of a diss track against Harvey Gantt called Hands. Now, when this ad speaks of Senator Kennedy, it's talking about the Civil Rights Act of 1990, which was vetoed in October of that year, a few weeks before midterm elections by President Bush, who said the legislation actually employs a maze of highly legalistic language to introduce the destructive force of quotas. Gantt was accused of supporting quotas rather than this position being who said anything about quotas. They're supposed to be unconstitutional. In any event, hands or more specifically, White Hands perpetuates white grievance, the idea that white people are actually the victims of racism just in reverse. And if you were to believe such a thing to the point that it influences the way you vote, a good portion of this depends on your political ideology, level of education, and socioeconomic status. Usually, European Americans who subscribe to reverse racism aren't goofy enough to make an argument that they're wholesale being discriminated against because of the color of their skin. In any institution or structure, like criminal justice, housing, banking, and so on, that victim mentality isn't supported by data or statistics. It's largely anecdotal. Although, they'll try to come up with something. See if you can catch the glaring issue with this video. Now, since everybody wants to say I'm lying, let me tell you some facts. And I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but it's a fact that there's been Harvard studies done, polls, and a ton of other evidence to back this fact up. As a matter of fact, 55% of white Americans feel like they've been discriminated against, whether at jobs, applying for colleges, in their personal life, or right here on social media especially. Did y'all see it? He said facts over feelings and then presented a survey of how white people feel they were discriminated against. So for the sake of argument, let's look at numbers for employment and even college admissions. In particular, let's look at affirmative action. Affirmative action benefits white women the most. Affirmative action benefits white women the most. Affirmative action benefits white women the most. I feel like I should make that into a catchy hook so people can remember it. They'll probably just dance to it. It wouldn't be a diss song, it would be a real song. No disrespect, white women. Y'all's grades are generally better than your male counterparts. But take, for instance, one of the most famous affirmative action cases which reached the Supreme Court. According to Time, there is ample evidence that Abigail Fisher just wasn't qualified to get into the University of Texas. After all, her grades weren't that great. And the year she applied for the university, admissions there were actually more competitive than Harvard's. In its court filings, the university has pointed out that even if Fisher received a point for race, she still wouldn't have met the threshold for admissions. Yes, it is true that in the same year, the University of Texas made exceptions and admitted some students with lower grades and test scores than Fisher. Five of those students were black or Latino, 42 were white. Here's a report from a study done in 1973 which says that in California firms alone, white women were holding 57,000 plus managerial jobs than they were in 1975. But if people are wondering about the plight of white men, first of all, how dare you? Second, affirmative action benefits white men too, or else college campuses would be filled with overachieving women. And Ivy League campuses would further be dominated by East and South Asian students. But don't forget about legacy admissions and parents who pay for their kids' spot in college. Remember, preferential hiring and academic admissions have been going on in the country for centuries. The only difference was in who was preferred. There was one group of people who were powerfully thoroughly, completely, and aggressively preferred, and those are white males. With all of this being said, Jesse Helms won that U.S. Senate seat against Harvey Gantt, due in part to scaring black voters and Gantt not getting endorsed by Michael Jordan and Helms telling his base what they wanted to hear. They were victims, and there was no reason to look into it further. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. 
I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.